Hi, I am Shal from Pangolin Photo Safaris and today I will be talking about focus bracketing, a really cool feature built into some camera bodies. First I will explain what focus bracketing is and when it might be useful. Then I will show you how to do it step by step. And finally I will also demonstrate how I blend the images together into one single composite. Before we get started, I want to mention that I'm using a Canon EOS R3 for this focus bracketing tutorial. Most of Canon's mirrorless bodies feature focus bracketing and the technique will apply to any other camera brands that have this feature built in too. It might just be called something differently within the menu system, like focus shift shooting or Nikon bodies for example. Focus bracketing is a technique that is used most often in landscape or macro photography, where multiple images are taken within different points of focus to extend the depth of field. These images are then merged together in a software combining the focus of each individual frame to create one final super sharp composite with as much detail as possible. This technique has been around and is used for a long time. But what is new is that modern cameras now take some of the workload off you. Focus bracketing was traditionally done by manual focusing the lens on different points within the scene or subject, which can be a tedious affair. With the focus bracketing feature built in and enabled, the camera will now automatically take multiple shots, shifting the focus slightly within the scene without the photographer have to move the focus ring on the lens. You do however still need the software to blend the multiple images together on your computer. I personally use Adobe Photoshop for this, but there is also other stacking software out there. Now that you know the principle of focus bracketing, I want to walk you through the actual process of doing it. Set your camera to either full manual mode or like I have to manual with auto ISO. Just so you can be in control of both aperture and shutter speed. In the past, most photographers used very narrow apertures like f16 to f22 to achieve a large depth of field. The downside of using these narrow apertures is diffraction and therefore not ideal sharpness. For those of you who don't know, diffraction is a negative effect that occurs when light bends as it enters a narrow opening which essentially reduces image sharpness. With built-in focus bracketing, we can now choose an aperture value that lies within the sweet spot of the lens we use, meaning where the lens performs its sharpest focus. For most lenses, this will be around two stops up from the maximum aperture. For example, if you have a 2.8 lens, you will use an aperture of 5.6 for the focus bracketing. Since you photograph static subjects or scenes and ideally use a tripod, the shutter speed of your camera doesn't have to be super fast. However, if you shoot handheld like I have and out in the nature rather than in a controlled environment, you still want to make sure to have a shutter speed minimum equal to the focal length you are using. I have doubled it to give me more room for error. So, 200 of a second shutter speed with a 100 mm lens that I used. So basically you want to get a good balance between sufficient shutter speed but not too high ISO value that introduce grain in the images. Now that we have set the aperture and shutter speed and my camera is adjusting the ISO automatically, all that is left to do is making sure that the lens is set to autofocus as focus bracketing does not work if the switch is set to manual focus. Within the menu look for focus bracketing or focus shift shooting. The name will depend on your camera brand. Once enabled choose how many shots you would like to take. This will depend very much on what you photograph. If you shoot wider scenes like landscape you will need fewer images than doing close-ups of a flower or insect for example. So basically, the shallower the depth of field is, the more images you should take. I am by no means an expert here, and since I've tried this out handheld, 
I couldn't take too many shots as alignment of these later would be very hard. So mostly I had set the number of shots to around 20. Of course, if you are on a tripod and take more images, you will get sharper results. The next setting you must decide on is the focus increment, which describes how much the focus shifts between exposure. With larger aperture values, you can increase the focus shift. If you use a very wide aperture, which means the depth of field is much smaller, you will want to use smaller increments of course. This will be a bit of a trial and error exercise. I've started out with the standard settings of 4 on my camera. Exposure smoothing, which is the last option, means that if enabled, the camera will suppress changes in image brightness that might occur during focus bracketing. This is obviously very helpful and that is why I have it enabled. Now that everything is set up, focus on the closest point of the subject you photograph and press the shutter button completely down to let the camera execute the focus bracketing. The camera will now continuously shoot, shifting the focal position towards infinity and stops after the specified number of images have been reached. As mentioned before, you ideally want to use a tripod for focus bracketing. But I wanted to see whether it could be done handheld too. And since I am a wildlife photographer, I have tested this once again out in the field. I'm out here on the Chobe River and right behind me is a Nile crocodile. The Nile crocodile is lying nice and steady, still, it's not moving. And we are also, uh, the boat is banked, so we're also not moving. So what I would like to get here is a sharp image all the way from the tip of the nose until behind the eye. Now I have a 500 fixed lens here and with the distance that I am, it's almost impossible to get a sharp image even if I'm shooting at f16 or if, even f32. Um, I also don't really want to use that f-stops, I would like to try and avoid a uh, diffraction and of course the high ISO. So instead I'm going to use focus bracketing here. Um, I position myself nice and low here in front of the crocodile. Um, I'm going to use this little cushion here to go really nice and low in front of the crocodile. As for the setting, I like to shoot manual or ISO. My um, shutter speed is 1000 of a second. Aperture is f8. I like to use f8 fall in quite a sweet spot of this lens is a nice sharp aperture the thousand shutter speeds double my focal length so uh, it's not too slow it's not too fast it should have a nice sharp image with this i'm also under exposing with two thirds just the way the light is falling so I don't lose any details and if i look through my camera um, i'm running at the moment my eyes is around 640 so i'm really happy with the settings so i can go and um, enable my focus bracketing now. Uh, number of shots I'm using here I think 20 is more than enough so between 10 and 20 but I think 20 is enough. Focus increments I'm going to use uh, the default on 4 uh, I think with the distance I am at the moment I think 4 will be enough and then I've also enabled exposure smoothing. Okay now that I have all my settings dialed in I'll Go and focus on the closest point towards me, which is the tip of the nose. So for this, I like to make use of a single focus point, just to be more precise. And then when I have focus, I'll press the shut release button and let the camera do its thing. So the bracketing is done now. Um, just for comparison later on, I'm also going to take one photo at f16 and one at F32, so we can just compare the three differences um, to see which one came out much better, of course. Back in Lightroom, you can see the stack of the crocodile images. I've already made some basic adjustments on the first image, which I now sync to the rest of the stack. To bring them into Photoshop for the actual stacking process, I make sure all images are selected and then right click. Edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. This might take a while depending on how many images you shot. Once they are open and layered, 
I select all layers and go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. This function is extremely helpful when shooting handheld and out in the nature, where there might be slight movement between each frame due to wind. After that, we can let Photoshop stack them by going to Edit, Auto Blend Layers and Stack Images. I have both options underneath checked to help correct any errors that might occur during the stacking process. I now like to crop the stacked composite and here is the final result. Nice and sharp from the tip of the nose up until behind the eyes. As you can see, neither F16 nor F32 produces this depth of field. All that these narrow apertures did is making the background more distinct and therefore distracting. Whereas the focus bracketing method delivered a beautiful sharp crocodile and yet a pleasing bouquet. If your camera has focus bracketing, it will be worth checking out and experiment with it. Perhaps you can make use of it photographing the small stuff, which is the name of one of the pangolin photo challenges this year. Entries closes on the 31st October 2022 and who knows, you might just win a trip to Chobi staying at the Pangolin Chobi Hotel. Make sure to check the link in the description below for more info on that. Happy photographing and good luck. Until next time.